Forza Motorsports launch was undoubtedly a failure, but in a recent blog post, the developers finally admitted that and pointed out some of their shortcomings. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about it. The game launched a couple of months ago, but even today, it's a game filled with more glitches than actual content. It's also a game that was bred from just a bunch of terrible decisions that are negatively impacting the game in a huge way. And I mean, there is some good in the new Forza Motorsport game, but the bad is far outweighing the good. I stand by what I said a couple of months ago. The accessibility options in the new Forza Motorsport game are not just one of the best features in Forza Motorsport, I think they're one of the best features in any video game out there. And yes, we've been getting monthly updates from day one. And although yes, those monthly updates sometimes kind of lack content and features, the fact that we're getting updates frequently for a racing game is always off. But the problem is, is the negatives of this game are so big and so impactful, they are far outweighing the positive. And that's led to the downfall of Forza Motorsport. It's a game that's struggling right now to crack a thousand concurrent players on Steam, which is just brutal. This meltdown of Forza Motorsport has led to a lot of like competitive racing series, either pausing or straight up just canceling their competitive racing series which sucks to see. And if you spend any amount of time online, you've probably seen videos like this one, where people are either offering up suggestions, complaining about the game, or you've probably just seen posts on like Reddit or Twitter or other things. We're, we're, we're gonna gloss over that last one and we're gonna move on. The developers haven't really addressed any of the community's concerns about the game. That was until they posted this article. So let's just jump into this. This is a message to the motorsport community, January 2024. It's basically written by the top three guys over at Forza. We're taking a moment at the start of the year to thank you all for your support and feedback since launch. Reflect on some of the things we've learned and share what you can expect from us in the coming month. They go on to say we will commit to publishing quarterly updates like this to let you know where we stand on items the community is passionate about. And to be honest, that's a great first step. If you want to get better, the first thing you need to do is address the problem. And I, th I think they know. Let's get into the big stuff though. Car progression is number one on their list. We've been gathering feedback from a variety of sources, including the suggestions hub, socials, forums, longtime players, and surveys. It's clear from looking at the feedback, while many of our players are enjoying the system as it is, for many others, it isn't delivering the upgrade experience that they expect from Forza Motorsport. To address this, we're exploring changes to the system. Our goal with these changes is to retain what is working for those that enjoy it while resolving the issues many of our most dedicated players have with this system. I'm definitely not the only person to say this, but I was probably one of the first. Customization in Forza Motorsport sucks. I made a video back in September after I was invited to an early access look at the new Forza Motorsport where I basically said the system was off. I've already complained about the system, so I'm not gonna do that again. Instead, I'm gonna offer up some alternatives that the developers maybe could implement. Global car point. When you get car points for leveling up your car, instead of just getting the car points for that one car, they go into a big bank the same way your credits do. And then you can go and spend those car points on any car. If the developers don't wanna make it that easy to upgrade your car, what if we went with car category, global car points? So if you really like driving supercars, for every supercar you level up, you get car points and those go into a bank as well. I think the developers could also simplify the car leveling process a lot by removing, tying the upgrades themselves to individual car level. Right now it does work like kind of like an old school RPG system where you go through a tree and you try to get to the end of the tree, but that's not, that's not how cars work. If I, as a driver, feel like my suspension needs upgrading, let me upgrade my suspension. Or, 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 now hear me out, this is a very radical one. What if we remove the car point system and, you know, just use a different currency? Like, like credit. Or like money, like you would have in real life. That might work. I actually stand by what I said a couple of months ago when I was talking about, complaining about this whole system. I feel like car levels should actually stay. If I really enjoy driving, I don't know, a Ferrari SF90, for example, I want to see that I drive that car the most. Give me an uncapped level so in the future I can come back to this game in like five years, ten years and go, oh yeah, I remember driving that Ferrari around. That's why it's level 420. That was so much fun. That wasn't all the developers spoke about, though. They also spoke about 
Forza Race Regulation. They said they're aware that Forza Race Regulations are not working as intended in some situations. We've heard about inconsistent or unfair penalties and instances where like there's intentional ramming, being pushed off track, spinning cars, and so on and so forth. I know what I'm about to say might be a little bit of a hot take, but I think the Forza Race Regulations, like the penalties that are being applied, are really good for the most part. For sure, there's inconsistencies, there's gonna be errors and stuff like that, and there's definitely areas that it can improve. Think about this for a second. What the developers have on their side is essentially just a bunch of numbers like speed and steering input and throttle and so on and so forth, right? It's just a bunch of numbers. And they need to take those numbers and turn those numbers into actual things like intent and getting into a driver's head to figure out the difference of did a driver crash into somebody because they pressed the brake too late and missed the corner? Or did they press the brake too late because they were trying to crash into somebody? It's a very, very difficult thing to do. And I, I think for the most part, the regulations work pretty well. Saying that though, it would be really nice if the developers kind of added in almost like a report system where players could report almost errors in the penalty system. For example, if you like clearly got spun out by another player and you ended up getting a penalty for that, you could press a button and report that and then all of that data would get sent over to the developers and then they could compile that data and be like, okay, there's a lot of errors when the player's getting spun out and they're getting the penalty. Let's look into that. I think overall that would be a pretty good system. But if Forza Motorsport is going to try to class itself as a sim racing game and invest heavily into esports at some point in the future, they are definitely going to need to beef up the Forza race regulations for things like track limits and penalties. Obviously, there's some shortcomings in the Forza race regulations, but it's nice to see the developers working on them right now. The last thing the developers spoke about was this, all about AI in Forza Motorsport. We've seen the feedback about our AI's driving behavior, abruptly braking, slowing down, not accelerating out of exits, and so on and so forth. We understand how important it is to have fair and competitive AI in motorsport, and our top priorities for an early 2024 are addressing the overly aggressive AI while also getting a cleaner race start into turn one, where many of the issues above most severely manifest and impact players. Back in October, when I started up my Forza Motorsport Let's Play series, where I went through and I played through some of the career mode, I got so many comments from people being like, Nick, you have no idea how to drive, which, yes, partly true, but I think the other part of that was the AI doing some funky stuff that I couldn't predict. They were just breaking way too much going into corners, not accelerating out of corners, and just taking funky racing lines. At the end of the day, because of that stuff, the career mode just isn't enjoyable for me to play, and the last episode that you saw me upload a a couple of months ago now was actually the last time I properly raced AI in this game. The AI is genuinely so bad in this game, I just don't find it fun to race in the career mode. Like, you know you're either going to get crashed into, you're going to crash into somebody else, and meanwhile the guy in first and second are going to run and you're never going to catch them. It's just, it's just not a fun experience. So again, it's nice to see the developers addressing that. And to be honest, it's great to see the developers addressing this stuff and kind of giving us the information that there might be some improvements in the future. But I wish they took it one step further. One thing we desperately need to see is more transparency from the developers. Just tell us what you're working on and give us the straight up reason why certain choices were made. Was the new car progression system designed to make your car feel like a car PG or was it designed to artificially increase playtime? I would love to see the developers be more truthful, and more transparent in the future. We need truth in advertising and in screenshots. The developers shouldn't be showing us trailers that look like this, and when the game comes out, it looks like this. Somebody on Reddit actually took this photo of the Pagani that the developers shared, which looks like this, it looks fantastic. And they compared it to the photo that we're actually able to take in the game. And, and the quality discrepancy between the two is massive. We also need some new features in this game ASAP. I know the game's only been out for a couple of months, but there are some things we desperately need. Spectate mode has to be a thing to bring back the hardcore audience. We also need car radars so players can actually kind of figure out where other players are on the road so you get less crashes. So yes, Sports Motorsports launch was a failure but at least the developers have finally addressed it, at least in writing. Now they've got to do it in the game. The developers need to get those features in as quickly as possible and also nail those features because Assetto Corsa 2 is right around the corner and is going head to head with the new Forza Motorsport game, at least on the 
player side. And if Gran Turismo 7 is actually going to come to the PC, and if Gran Turismo 7 is going to come to the PC, then I really do worry what's going to happen to Forza Motorsport. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.